Yeah. You are filming, I guess, by the men's chamber. Yeah. And the women's. Or fitting well, they're just fitting rooms. Nothing specific in terms of gender. Mm. Yeah. So, welcome to today's chat. Mm. Quick draws. Talking about quick draws. Where's an owl? Owl and where's? Yeah, I mean, so these cool, things, yeah, okay. when you're climbing, you use them to clip things to things. That's like yeah, the main and then job. Things, the things to you. Yeah. And these things tend to catch and save you. What's the most quick draws you've linked together in a chain to clip yourself to? Three. Three. Yeah, if that. If that. Yeah. One time I had five quick draws, just like. Why? It's because I didn't have a sling. And but just pull yourself up close like this, you only need one, look how long this But it's so awkward, like my feet were like this far above a nice ledge. Like okay. I could just be standing nicely, cleaning, chilling. But Why if I do you have five one, spare quick draws with you? That's like... Because I top roped, I top roped the route cleaning the drawers. Oh, and then, okay. Then I was at the chains yes. and I just needed to clean the last two. Why don't you take your cleaning kit with you? Because I knew I was going to have a gazillion quick draws. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see how long, how many trick quick draws I can put together. <laughs> it's like more than an arm's length to me. <laughs> That's so far. <laughs> That's only two. Okay, they weren't all long ones like these ones. Yeah, that sucks. I mean, that's like a pretty decent length sling. <laughs> yeah, it's a long sling, is what that is. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Okay, cool. Five. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, look, I mean, I'm all for long, quick draws. But to be honest, don't, don't use them that often. Like, I, I feel, <laughs> to be honest, most projects, if I get on this, someone's quick draws already on them. Yeah, and I And they've like, got their long ones or their double up ones. Yeah, very often there's, you just get to Bourbon and there's just... Like, yeah. There's, you like want to climb something and you like... I don't even know why I bought a set of quick draws. Because they're just all over the place. For warming up, obviously. Oh. You need quick draws for warming. <laughs> you get to the crag and you warm up and then you're like, oh, okay. I need some quick draws. I need, okay. I need some quick draws to warm up on this 18 crew. But now you have the swank board. Yeah. Problem solved. Yeah. The swank board created by Wes here. <laughs> the ultimate warm up tool for the crag. Yeah, there we go. Replacing a whole rack of quick draws. Yeah. <laughs> what happens, so like I've been working a route in Bourbon that pretty much constantly has quick draws on because it's a popular route, everyone's mm. trying it. Mm. It's not that easy that people are sending it quick. Like some guys, myself included, have been projecting it on and off for months at a time. Yeah. So you get there and you just expect that there's going to be quick draws on. Yeah. What happens if this What happens, nice? like one time I got there and there were no draws. Really? I was just like, I'm I guess I'm climbing something else. Like You've never seen it without doors. I wonder what it looks like without doors. I wouldn't like even recognize it. I'd be like, what is that? <laughs> that looks cool. It's like how it is. Okay, so we're here today. So the Bourbon Rock Rally is coming up. Mm. And we need to inform you guys how to clip quick doors correctly if you don't know. And just like some fun facts about quick doors. For example, this one made by Black Diamond has a little fancy wire gate nose. Mm. Very nice. Quite exciting. So it doesn't snag when you're trying to take it out the hanger at the, mm. the bolt side. Or on the rope. And this one has on the rope side as well. Let's hold up that posi wire nice. quick. Like this posi wire one mm. has a regular wire gate at the bottom but a hook free nose on top. Science. Very oh. handy. What's your favorite sport climbing book? Um, it's hard to say. I mean, like, you know, a new one always comes out, you're like, damn, that looks nice. Mm, that does look um, nice. Yeah. I do have these uh, spirits, not as big of a spirit. I have um, three that size. Three this size. I might yeah. just buy some low going to size. Yeah. They're quite nice. I'm sure they come in handy. I mean, they for sure come in handy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a fan. First, I mean, it doesn't have a. Uh, the, the, the hook, lip to snag on the each hook side. on the nose, which is yeah. the best invention ever. Yeah. Thank you, Petzl, for inventing the <laughs> snag-free nose. Good job. Imagine the like moment they're like, 
this we can just do it like this. <laughs> just do it like this. <laughs> Game like changer. some guy sitting in his office designing quick draws for pets and he's like <sighs> so sick of drawing in this the snag this nose. Little nose and he thinks back to the last 10,000 times he's been to the crag and had to clean the drawers and every time he tries to take the carabiner out it just hooks on the gate and he's like <laughs> only someone would invent a snag free nose carabiner so I don't have to hook the carabiner I invent carabiners <laughs> and he's like hang on my job is to design carabiners for pets so why don't I just invent it and then he did and so kudos to that guy thus the snag free nose in my opinion the greatest four climbing quick draw in the world was born mm. the pets of spirit yeah they're fairly light eh? yeah for the size of the dog like, bone the these uh, carabiners are crazy light yeah Pop quiz, how much does the spirit bean away? Uh, 28 grams. That is indeed incorrect, Shut but close. Idea. 36 grams. What grams? Really? 36 grams for a spirit, like for a solid gate, like quite chunky sport farming door that only weighs 36 grams. Mm. The spirit bean weighs as much as this black diamond neutrino wire gate. Pretty hectic, eh? Pretty hectic. Although that might be 32, I can't remember. But it's, like, you know, talking close grand, yeah. yeah. Um, Some people are grand counters, though. Yeah, so I know, fair. For them, although when you sport climbing, let's be honest. Yeah, like that's the other thing, like how much weight do you save? You're not on, yeah. you're not climbing with drawers. Like, let's say, you. let's say you buy super lightweight quick draws and you say 10 grams per quick draw. Mm. You have 10 quick draws, that's 100 grams. Yeah. If 100 grams is making the difference between on siding and not on siding mm. while you're placing the drawers. Yeah, just then like get try some on site. Yeah. <laughs> try on site easier things, or just get a tiny bit stronger. Mm. But for sport, literally climbing, like a tiny bit stronger. Yeah, it's like the difference between a half an extra pull-up. Yeah, not even. Yeah. Like put a hundred grams in your pocket and go to a pull-up. You shouldn't notice the difference. You reckon you'll notice the difference? No, no. You won't notice. I don't anything. even know what a hundred gram is. Well, I guess it's uh, <laughs> three of these. <laughs> 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 Which is nothing. Like. <laughs> Three of these little things. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah, not much at all. Yeah, the other, I, I, I dig the um, dog bone. Yeah. And I like that it's like chunky at the bottom as well. Yeah. It's really that nice. nice. It's nothing Polar, worse than. Yeah. Variable width. Variable width. Yeah. Because it's, it's still skinny thing. to fit in the beaner nicely. Yeah. yeah chunky yeah, yeah. to grab when you've been a wuss and you want to just grab the draw. Mm. Mm. Nothing wrong with and grabbing the draw. Yeah. Like nice and durable and strong. Yeah. 100%. Perfect for working sports. 100%. Something worse than trying to pull up on a tiny like piece the of little, rope. The little Dyneema dog bone. Like yeah. to be fair, the greatest advantage of the Dyneema dog bone is that it can rotate so easily. For sure. So for if you sure. backflip the rope, like the bean is more likely to the squish, things yeah. more likely to rotate so you're not stuck mm. yeah no, like unclipping your soul yeah no, 100% because this one like it rotates but not that much but it's pretty stuck yeah this one like the thinner dynamic that, that being on said <laughs> it just stays in the same spot yeah because it's so easy to make it rigid which is quite handy yeah yeah very nice very nice draw comes yeah. in at a pretty nice price yeah, I mean, it's a bit pricey. Um, For those that are less weight conscious and more money conscious, pets will have this one, the gym. Mm. Which yes, is... Yes. Oh, such much of a muchness. It's like really? much, like it's a little heavier, but not much. If you're on siding and you have a rack of gins versus a rack of spirits, you might notice the difference. For sure. But if you're red pointing and the drawers on the wall, it's the mm. same, mm. you know. They clip super nice, pretty solid. What I like about the gyms, they got they kind of got that ridge at the back. Oh uh, yeah. So when you actually if you grab the draw, if you, if you clip by grabbing the draw, yeah, it's, it's a bit more beefy. It's nice to hold. Yeah. If you have slightly bigger hands, like if you're a little kid with small hands. It's, yeah. Uh, if you're a little kid with small hands, then you chino. Yeah. That's the best thing for you. Mm. Um, if you're a man. Yeah. The gym. <laughs> the beefier gym. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine Black Diamonds watching our video and they're like, we are manly men and we make quick draws for manly men. And they yeah. come out with a carabiner that's like this big. <laughs> Where's an owl? We made a carabiner just for you guys. The manly man carabiner. <laughs> 200 grams per carabiner, Ugh. but it's like this big. You, did, you just have to look at the rope and look at the bean and it's and in it just goes in. Yeah. 
Det er sådan noget, der er ja. på blive, det er mm. no, no skates. <laughs> det er så andet løsning. Ja. Ja, I mean, like, these are... These are nice ones saying, I mean, the black diamond ones in comparison, they just got a slightly niftier design. I don't know if it makes it stronger, because they still got that kind of hook there. Um, yeah, so the strength is still the same, actually. Mm. I mean, to be honest, the black diamond one is 100 kilos stronger. Really? One kilo newton stronger on the BB. Yeah, and I'm sure that's to do with having that hook on the nose. And like, it's just the strength of the beam. Like the hook on the nose is. You reckon, you reckon that helps at all? Not really. Because when this one, like that's why it's got that key lock shape. So when oh, the yes, when the yes, nose, yes, like that. when you load it, the nose starts bending out, mm. and then it catches the ridges catch on each other, and then no, it can't bend. Sorry, I actually, actually I didn't notice that before. Yeah. Very very smart. Smart, eh? But I think the, I mean the black diamond one also looks. It's cool. It's also clever. Yeah. Like the way they just. Very on to that edge with still having the Yeah. I have some black diamond live wires as well. It's mm. the one with the green, the green puzzle 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 puzzle. The It's green. like the snazzy version of this one, mm. basically. It's got like a nice Those green also very nice, beaner, yeah. a very with dog bone and a nice wire gate at the mm. bottom. Mm. And, and those it has like the, well. the gin with the, the kind of ridge. Yeah, the carabiner shape is very similar to yeah. this one. It's got like wide, like that little kink on the back side, mm. which mm. is handy. Oh, no, they're nice. They are. They're actually very nice. They I've never climbed with them. Yeah. Then. So I don't know. So maybe I can't have an opinion. Look wise, they're pretty tasty. Yeah. You can climb with mine on the weekend. Okay. Mm. I only have two though. <laughs> Fun fact when I was like, I don't know, must have been like 18 or 19, went to Struben's. Some guy forgot his two quick doors on the top of the route. I was like, okay, I'm a good Samaritan. Like, took them home. Posted on climb you today. Left them on the top of the you left them just on the chains. All so obviously they were top roping and then they just pulled the rope and forgot that they left two quick jaws at the top. So oh. I score these two quick jaws, but I'm like, I'm a good Samaritan, I'm gonna post on climb today. So I post on climb today, everything. Some guy messages me, he's like, hey, those are my quick jaws, thank you for getting them, it's super kind of you, you're an amazing human being, I wish I could be like you. <laughs> and then <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. Well, I have them. Like, let me know when you want to come past and collect them, or where I should meet you, or whatever. And then you just never got back to me. So I've had these yeah. quick doors that I know are not mine. And this guy, I mean, at any point he could just remember and just message me and be like, hey, those are my quick doors. I want them back. And then I have to be like, okay, yeah, so, you got. So you but I've had them you now. Follow, you didn't follow up, eh? No, because obviously I didn't want him to collect because they're nice <laughs> quick doors. Probably good Samaritan, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but also I was like. Good morals and stuff. So I didn't want to like you don't just want to take it. You also don't want to take gear and then climb on it without. I feel like that's just like bad juju, you know. Like if a quick draw is going to break, it's probably going to be that one you stole, the one you stole or the one you found break. and didn't try to get it back yeah. to its owner. But now, I mean, I've whipped on those quick draws a hundred times. Yeah, but you you looked up the owner. Yeah. I followed the due process. <laughs> the due process. I've been listening to the Bad Beta podcast. Yeah. It's these guys from Canada that yeah, I've heard what, it. you've heard it. Mm. And they had one episode on booty and gear, like just taking yeah. gear. Oh, that booty. Yeah, so they reckon if you leave something on the wall and it's not an emergency and you haven't like done it to get down quickly to save your friend or whatever, like you just forget a piece of gear or you get a piece of gear stuck, like that's it. You've committed it to the cosmos and it's no longer, you have no more claim. Mm. Right, so all the booty I found, uh, it's all been just like drop things, and they're all pretty old and stuff. Mm. So I don't, most of, I think there's one piece I've ever found. With. Really? Mm. Yes. Mo most of it's like just whatever, and you use a clip of shoes mm. in your chalk bag, and maybe it's a bail in there now, and stuff yeah. like that. But most of them are like just old and old and manky beans. Yeah, old and manky that's, beans. that's the thing people want to have. They want one, the oldest mankiest beanie they have on their rack. Mm. That's the one they want to trust their life to when they're bailing off a room. Yeah. It's weirdly enough. Um, <laughs> yeah, it makes you feel safe. You know, and yeah. you're losing any good. And then that, yeah. someone else is going to find that bail beaner. Yeah, and so and the, cycle, so the continues. cycle continues. Have you ever bailed on a beaner that you scored off a root? Yeah. I have as well. Yeah. That's the best. You're like, uh, score this beaner, 
Yeah. You just like shifting locations. That's all it yeah. is. Yeah. The life of a beano. Yeah. It required something. You need like. I'm not gonna say that. Such a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> That is a good idea, yeah. actually. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so look here. Yeah. You know, just this all loud, yeah? It's all gonna have to push up. Last five minutes to the front. Okay. Pretty good, eh? Okay, this thing's got a whole... 360. Don't, customers are still gonna buy that one. Don't fuck it up. If this is gonna fuck it up, then it's not gonna fuck it up. Okay, so sometimes, so as you can see, yeah, uh, we've got different length quick drawers. Like, sometimes you've clipped a drawer and it's just hanging, the carabiner is hanging on the edge of the rock or something. Let's use this one. Yeah, hold some of those. So you've kept your quick draw and there's a lip and the carabiner is hanging on the edge of the lip. Mm. So in that case, the carabiner is quite weak there. It's easy. A friend of mine actually broke a carabiner by falling on it. Really? Yeah. Like clipped a beaner, it was sitting sideways over a lip and instead he just, then he fell and he just snapped the carabiner. What happened? Just so the next one, the next one caught it. I'm sure he cracked his pants there. Yo, that's, that's something you frame. Yeah. You know? So in that case, having one where the sling can sit over the lip and the carabiner can just hang in space. So that's one reason to have a longer quick draw. Mm. And then sometimes when you sport climbing, the guys that bolted it weren't very considerate. Thanks for bolting it. But Thanks for bolting it, it for bolting it. But you could have put the bolts right by the jug and then I can just clip from the jug. Mm. Instead of having to do two moves up on tiny crimps and then clip. Yeah. Like yards. You like just think about a, that next time you put yeah. Bolt. Next time you put it in a bolt, put it close to the jug so it's easy for people mm. to clip when they're trying to red bolt. Mm. You're on siding and you have to do two moves to put the draw in and clip the rope. It's way mm. harder than if you can just do it from the jug. That's when you need those extra light carabiners. That's where that hundred grams yeah, makes a difference. That is where it makes a difference. Or you have those extra long ones. Pro tip: the like the petal spirits mm. and some other quick draws that are quite stiff. You can hold it upside down, and it's not ideal to have the the rope in yeah. in the in the bolt. But if you're stuck and you need to aid through, you can just like hook high above your head. Yes, you could. Well, with a bit okay. Of, with so a bit quickly, of just some anatomy of a quick yeah. draw. The top carabiner is allowed to swivel free, so and the fall. bottom carabiner, the one that the rope runs through, is fixed. The reason for that is if you have the bottom end on your harness and it's free to jiggle around, once you flip the rope on, invariably the quick draw is going to be upside down. Mm. Or the bottom bean is and it's the last yeah. to clip the and rope. And it's nice, I mean this is this is stiff, so you put that yeah. rope on there, it's nice and nice solid. And easy. Whereas you try the rope here and then the carabiner so no just harder. like moves. Yeah. You know, a bit of an over exaggeration, but <laughs> with the points there. Yeah. And then the top one, I'll show you on this one actually. You don't want it to pull too badly on the bolt. So the top carabiner needs to be free to rotate without messing up the alignment of the carabiner on the bolt. Mm. So that's why the top one is loose and the bottom one is tight. So if you clipping drawers that aren't yours or your friends lent you some drawers, the loose one is the one that goes on the rock and the tight one is the one for the rope. Yeah. So sometimes when you're climbing, you want to have, like if I'm red pointing something hard and the bolts aren't well placed, I'll extend the length of the quick draw so that I can clip it from the jug and then just yeah, carry the like climb to save a lot of energy while I'm red pointing. So sometimes, yeah. like I made this one now, it's out of a, this is actually, this would actually be a really nice quick draw. It's a black diamond hood wire with mm. just a regular nylon 18mm nylon sling yep. with a neutrino on the bottom. Obviously, I like things to look good so I matched up the colors. And I put a little pencil string on there to hold the bottom bean nice and tight so it doesn't mess around while I'm clipping. And that's so like a 30 centimeter draw is just like a really handy length. Yeah, 100 percent And like like pencil make this special dog bone, but no one really makes Metolius actually make one. That's but not many one. brands make a 60 centimeter draw or 40 centimeter draw. Yeah. So it also it hangs really long, it's like hanging by your knees, not the yeah. piercing the climb. Yeah. So at least with Grab the slings, you're able to... show you on this 
then you get a 60 centimeter. So yeah, we have a 60 centimeter, Very which nice. is the same thing. Like this one, you can save a lot of rope drag, or if the rope's running under a roof, you can use it really mm. nicely. Mm. Um, I've got a bunch of those. Yeah. exactly the same. Yeah, and I just rack them like this when I'm climbing, and then just unclip, let it hang, clip the rope, bam, it's quite nice. Do you do that opposed to like doing it as an alpine? Yeah, for sport, because the bottom bean is fixed. Ah. The alpine's tricky. Yeah, you see like, I guess I don't ever fix mine. Maybe I should get in yeah. contact with that pig. Yeah, the pig, pig place. Yeah. Pig place. The pig place. <laughs> The farmer's market. The farmer's market. <laughs> but not like for fresh produce, for like farming supplies. Mm, like pig sure. castration elastics. Yeah. So pro tip, you can take the like, to castrate pigs, they use a really tiny but strong rubber band. And you can put it, I read this on the climbing forum when I was a kid and I was- Whatever works, because I, 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 I said for your braces, you know when you get braces, you get those elastics. The little rubber band Why for your braces. Why don't you just get braces? those to fix your little bottom thing? To fix the bottom Because it actually thing. doesn't do anything yeah. to your... Actually what works really well, a mountain bike tube, you cut that into strips. Oh yeah. yeah and yeah. just have a little thin strip of mountain bike tube, put it around on each side. You can Google it, it's pretty handy. And you save a, a dollar. Yeah. yeah. So, like, Quite often I'll use a 60 centimeter quick draw like this. Every now and again, like this one here is a 120. That's kind of handy. And every now and again. It's <laughs> crazy long. Like that's pretty long. Have you watched, there's a video of Paige Clarkson doing Molly Flower. Yeah. She has quite a few of those because the yeah. root wonders and there's like big like, grooves and stuff and the road drag gets quite hectic. Yeah, yeah. Like if I was Paige on Molly Flower, I would have just put in one of these guys. 240. Just a good old 240s. Just a really long quick draw, long, like super handy. Long. For when you just want to be able to like clip something and then you're traversing to the side and the rope drag's going to be really bad. Or you're the about work, to, you're about to climb <laughs> through a massive roof. Yeah, so like just having a really long draw is sometimes yeah. useful. So I often just climb with three of these on my harness, just in case. Often? Often. You often climb with I three, often climb with you said you really long three draw. long draws. You know, sometimes you get to yeah, the Yeah, can you show me how you rack that up? Yeah, sure. <laughs> but then I have to climb up and get it. Do you know? Yeah. Do you want me to climb up? No, it's I'm okay. sorry, I can't. So I pretty much just take it, like, over my shoulder like this. And then I just wrap it around, like, a gazillion times. And then you just clip it together like this. And that's it. Like, if you're racking a 240 sling or a 240 centimeter draw, that's good beta. <laughs> yeah. I can't talk shit for so long. <laughs> Pretty much. It should be. It should be. Okay, wait, hold this one. Give me that posi wire. So. If you are a little scared and you want to have the security of clipping the long draw from the jug, but then you don't want to fall onto a long draw because you're a wuss. Then you can clip the long draw and then climb a bit higher and then clip the short draw. You can do this with a 120 as well. And it's just a good way. Yeah. Like this one could be a 120 centimeter draw. Give you some confidence to do the hard moves and then clip this one. Like if you just leave it, the crux, let's say that you're I mean, on a ledge and then you got to do the crux. Yeah, like having fair. that extra bit of security would be really nice. And yeah. potentially limits you falling onto the ledge and breaking your hand. Mm. No one wants that. Mm, mm, mm. I'm probably not going to do that, but I, I can check it out. Cool. Yeah. Could be, could be quite handy. Actually, I'm going to try this weekend. Every, every 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 uh, every bolt I get, so I'm just going to extend them and have a short one on. Clip, 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 clip. <laughs> good, good practice for clipping. If you do that. Understand? Yeah. So you go into the rock ride. Um, I will. I've actually uh, managed to get out of work for it. Ah. I was guiding in the berg, and now I am no longer. That's exciting. Yeah. So not making money and then going climbing. What's, what's happening that weekend? Sounds like most of my weekends. Yeah. <laughs> you gonna be there? I'll definitely be there. 
I might even be teaching some courses on Ooh. how to clip ripples. <laughs> Quite exciting. Yeah. A whole course on how to clip ripples? Well, it's like a how to lead outside course. Okay. So if okay. you are coming to the rock rally and you'd like to learn how to lead outside, mm. email City Rock. Don't talk what to are the course. What other courses are going to be happening? Um, probably like a how to clean course. Um, I don't know. I should know, <laughs> I should know but I don't. Should know a bit more than a how to what clean other course. courses are happening? How to lead, how to clean. How to lead and how to clean. Oh, so okay, so I actually am good at my job. Surprise. Or an upsell course. Yeah. No? That would be a cool course. How about a deep water soloing course on the on the mm. mold about the pool? That would be cool. How to deep water solo. How to highline. How to highline. Ooh. Ooh. Is it going to be a hotline? I'm sure it'll be a hotline. There probably will be a hotline set up there. Red! Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah, there's yoga, night run, mountain biking. Trail running. Trail yeah. running. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Are you ever going to trail run again? Uh, for the yeah. next two months? Yeah, no, I'll run. I'm probably not going to run that weekend. Yeah. Yeah. So climbing weekend, let's be real. Yeah. Waste my time running when I could have a beer. Or climb. A and climb. Oh yeah, or both. A beer and climb at the same time. Mm. Mm. Be responsible. Don't drink and climb. Hey Tyler, how's it going? Do you want to be in our video? Do you want to be in our video? You're already in the video. Were you photo bombing in, on the back there behind Wade? You think you're funny? <laughs> Completely an accident. Oh. I doubt that. I'll review the footage and let you know the verdict. Please just add it in some time. Okay, I actually had a list of stuff we needed to cover in this video. Ty, so, do you ever climb on one of these? Yeah. Up and in. How long is that? 240. 240? Yeah. 400, quick draw. No sense. What's a fucking five meters long? <laughs> what does this one mean? Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so I just wanted to talk about which way like the gate should be facing and stuff. Yeah. So for those of you that have never sport climbed in your life mm. or that always just clip the drawers that are conveniently hanging in the gym, mm. when you go outside the drawers aren't pre-placed, you have to place your own quick drawers. And when you're doing that there's a few things to take into consideration. Wait, do you want to talk about that? Well, uh, obviously which side you clip. <laughs> As we spoke about earlier, the one side is a bit more floppy, the other side is um, nice and secure. Yeah, we did say it's just to allow for that movement on the bolt when you fall, and then on the harder side, it um, doesn't allow for the quick draw to spin on your harness, so when you get there, it's always perfectly placed, and then obviously having that firmness makes it a bit easier to clip. A oh, very nice. Then the other thing is basically, I mean, so let's say four ways to clip. Yeah. Oh four ways to clip a quick Four ways to clip, clip with, with your, your hand. hand. Yeah. Two ways. Two ways to two orientations. Yeah. So yeah. when you get to a bolt, you can either put the quick draw with the gate facing to the, to the right or you can put it with the gate facing to the left. Mm -hmm. And why would you do one or the other? <coughs> Um, well, it'll basically come down to when you fall on the rope or you put tension on the rope, the quick draws are going to pull and basically what you want is the spine to be touching the rock and not the gate. So if the gate's obviously bumping its rock and it hit it a little, little bit and it can obviously open the gate or weaken, weaken the beaner. Theory, I mean, yeah. So, best way to remember it is spine towards the climb. So if you are clipping a quick draw or a bolt, and you're looking up to a bolt and the next bolt on your right, you're gonna clip um, you're gonna clip that bolt with the spine facing towards the right. So you're gonna clip it 
exactly where it's going to Pretty happen. much like that. Um, and you if want, you, yeah, so when you're falling, you're on the rope rub, rubbing on the spine. Mm. You don't want to be falling with the rope this side because <laughs> don't want that to happen. Yeah. Um, so you want to make sure that the gate is facing away from the direction you climb. Yeah. And the spine is the spine. spine this is the called the spine. Yeah. And also, if you um, actually do a climb and come down, and you pull that rope tight, and obviously bolts aren't always directly above each other. You know, they go boom, boom, boom. And if you pull all that tight, the quick draws will obviously come off the rock and, you, and you'll actually see all the spines will be touching the, the rock as opposed to the gate yeah. facing in. Gate facing in, not the end of the world, not great, um, mm. but it's something you just kind of learn. If the yeah. climb is going straight up and you don't know which way to place it, just kind of go opposite to the one below. So you go left, right, left, right, left, right. So that's the way they are in the gym and it just helps minimize that, that risk of the rope popping. Yeah. Much. I think that's, I mean, sure, yeah. clipping a creature. Yeah, it's not rocket science. Yeah. yeah, and then, I mean, that's what the gist of it, I think. Yeah. With the rope coming out, there's more like, let's see. Let me think about this. Oh, yeah, that's, that's if you back clip the. It's more yeah. likely for it to come. Yeah, so if you have. Two oh, sorry, at the sorry, same sorry, time. sorry, sorry. I see yeah. what you're saying with the rope coming out the back. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sorry, I was. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, so you want the rope on the spine, but often when you're climbing, let's say the gate's facing to the left and you're climbing to the left, like. And you fall, as long as you're falling outwards, it's hard for it to unclip. Yeah, but if you're on a roof and you're falling like under it, then it can still yeah, yeah. unclip itself. Yeah. But that's very rare in my 15 years of climbing. Yeah, I've seen it happen once. Yeah, um, it's, not, it's not something that happens very often. So don't stress too much about it. Just be aware of it and know that mm. you don't want to be doing that. And then, oh, another reason for having a carabiner that constantly clips onto the bolt and the other carabiner that constantly clips onto the rope so that the carabiner like the bolt isn't always the smoothest nicest thing so you like get quite a bit of wear and tear on this carabiner that goes in the bolt and then if you flip it upside down now the rope's running over this rough surface yeah well, it can get quite sharp i've had some quite yeah sharp ones that i fall down yeah so like sometimes especially on permadores with the drawer's been hanging on a roof for a few months and guys have been falling on it a lot. You get a little groove worn in the top carabiner where the hanger sits. And I've seen quick, well, quick drawers, but carabiners that are worn almost halfway through just from that constant movement on the bolt. Because yeah. yeah. the bolt is stainless steel and the quick draws out of them. Obviously, the carabiner's going to wear out quicker. Mm. And if you flip that around, you can like pull shot your rope, just yeah. slicing yeah. through the sheath running over the rope. Yeah, just stick to it. So you want to always have one carabiner for the wall, one carabiner for the rope, and that's... Keeps your rope happy, keeps your controls happy. Yeah. Keeps you happy. Keeps you alive. Mm. Or not having to buy a new rope every six months. No. Which can get expensive. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's responsive. Like guys. Yeah. <laughs> Black Diamond and Petzl, we just like to give a shout out to our sponsors. Yeah. Um, Thanks a lot, we're looking forward to the, the big boy. Yeah. <laughs> Beaners. <laughs> the big boy Beaner from Black Diamond. Mm. Um, okay. Interesting to see the counter, the counter battle with Petzl, see what they come out of. Yeah. How much bigger can they go? Yeah. How much heavier? I mean, it's always been a race for like the smallest and lightest carabiner, but at mm. some point, you're just trying to clip your rope through a keyring carabiner and that's just not practical. Not when you're trying to red point hard, you want a nice big carabiner so that the rope just goes in quick. And the bigger the better. The bigger the better. That's why I have this 240 centimeter sling. Yeah. The only problem with it is it's such a small little carabiner. Yeah, well, it's small. Like, sometimes not all about the size. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. But every now and again, I mean, bigger is better to a point. Like, yeah. a carabiner bigger than this would be too big. Mm. It's like this big, just no one's having a good time on that. Yeah. Hanging by your knees. Yeah, it's just not. 
It's just not pleasant. <laughs> That's good, that was sharp. Like you said, hang by your knees. And I just pictured it like on the gear loop, and I was like, yeah, it would hang by your knees. And then I was like, wait a second, hanging by your knees. Yeah. <clears throat> I was sorry, about that's the why I laughed so hard. I was talking about the game. Obviously. Obviously. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I don't know what else to talk about. Yeah. So I go check my list. Yeah. Do you want to do a little monologue? A monologue? While I'm gone. I'll be back. Monologue. Oh, that's <laughs> Do you want to do a monologue? <laughs> okay, so I have... Oh, Hyderac draws for Sport Farm. Oh. Uh, Are you a Gates in or a Gates out? I'm a Gates out. And I was thinking about it in the car driving here to talk about it. And you know, there's, there's quite a thing. Like, people, people are quite set in their ways and their ways is better. Yeah. Most... I understand both, but I think it was just habit from when I started climbing, that's where I put it on. Yeah, and you just started gates on and you never changed. And it's never occurred to me to change. Yeah. Um, still hasn't really. And I think the gates in, I mean, it doesn't actually matter. But you're climbing on the rock, you're sliding into the rock or whatever, that gates against your body, so it's going to be rubbing against the spine. Whereas on gates out, you can be hitting this gate and it can maybe fall off. That to me is like the only major difference. I don't know if you have anything else on gates in or out. But yeah, so for me, I had a discussion with someone about this a little while ago. And for Trad, where you've got a lot of carabiners on your gear loop, gates oh, we just out. Yeah, gates out. Was our yeah. Trad with you? Perhaps. Perhaps. Well, Trad is someone we had the Jason oh, okay. conversation. <laughs> <laughs> the gates out, it's really easy to grab the carabiner, like grab that one carabiner and unclip mm, it, you know. Mm, mm. Um, and also you have to fight in between everything yeah. to get to that gate and then open it. So when you're racking with the gate out, your body sits so nicely against this, the venus mm. sits so nicely against your body. It's like sitting on your hip bone, you know. Mm. When you gate in, it's sitting awkwardly, like mm. it's just not mm. as comfortable, I think. But to grab a quick draw quickly to clip, gates in makes more sense. So kind of more for sport, for sport yeah. climbing? For sport climbing, yeah. gates in makes sense. For trad climbing, or if you're doing a multi pitch where you've got a lot of gear on your harness, gates out yeah. is where. Yeah. And I think. Also, I mean, fine when it's on, cost me another quick draw. When I've got this hanging on my body like this, I often just slide this one in and clip it on, especially yeah. with trad, you know, when you have yeah. multiple pieces. Yeah. I just find you don't even have to open, you're just pushing it against and it's going in and then boom. Yeah. You can do that with a few. Yeah. You know, if it's inwards, you just have to, you know, it's such a minor, oh my goodness, I have to yeah. squeeze it on instead of just pushing it. Yeah. But it's, it's the little things it's, that it's make It's the little things. Look, yeah. maybe this weekend in sport climbing, I'll try gates in, eh? Just to see Teach this old dog new tricks. Go. Yeah. Cool. But, uh, yeah, why not? See what happens. Yeah, I went gates in the other day for the first time. Because I had this conversation about gates in versus gate out, and I concluded that for sport, gates in is better. Mm. And I was like, well, now that I've reached no, this decision, yeah, you have to do it. I have to change. Yeah. So I racked gates in, and it wasn't that bad. No, I don't think it, you'd even think about it. Yeah. Because, you know, you look at your business and you just take, you just take a quick draw and you just clip it in. and. One thing that go. does does give me up. I've had a few climbing partners that do it differently. Well, let's say they go gates in and I go gates out. Yeah. Then when you get to a multi-pitch, you're just being quick and you go to your gear here. So they doing their thing and you're just putting gear on their loops. Yeah. But I'm always putting gates out and then they yeah. sit there and change everyone <laughs> the other way. So it's quite nice to know which way your partner yeah. likes the gear. Yeah. I mean, yeah, for trad, I get people to rack onto the sling and then I'll rack yeah. on myself. Yeah, yeah. You know, but on sports, sometimes people are just clipping things onto you. It's some, yeah, sometimes yeah. it's better, some, you know, it's... 
not Katrina, but yeah. it would be nice if someone paid attention and clipped the onto my harness the correct way. Yeah. I'm not gonna name names. But you gay tired, you're the same as me. <laughs> <laughs> Surely I'll just do it naturally. So I'm, like when you're racking up someone else, it's easier What's to just rack gay yeah. 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 Maybe the, the real the real deal is you should just it doesn't matter. You go gates in, gates out, whatever the way you randomly put on your harness, that's yeah. how you climb it. Boom. Yeah. You do Don't waste the time. Yeah. There's no wrong way, that's the moral of the story. Right. Gates out. Gates out is the best way, but only for track. For sports, it doesn't matter. <laughs> sure, okay, yeah. we've spoken long about quick draws. We have spoken long about quick draws. Any final points on quick draws? <sighs> yeah. Um, you know, they're all ultimately the same shape and size. Pretty much. Pretty much. Like, like there's a little bit of variation. Though. Looks like the variation. The day, Let's be real. Go with kind of what you can afford. They're all rated the same. Yeah. Um, if you're not a high-end climber, it doesn't actually make a difference. And yeah. you can actually pick something that looks nice. Because people love picking things that just suit their style. Yeah. Nice rather than like I've sold so many of these black diamond quick draws yeah. just because it's they look so pretty. Yeah. Like so the blue fades into the black. Mm. Pretty color on the dog bone here. This is a nice one. That's a beautiful looking quick draw. Yeah. Like if I was buying just based on aesthetics, I'd probably be climbing on these. Mm. Mm. But as we discussed earlier, I'm all about performance. So yeah. I have these. 100%. But to be honest, I've climbed on these a lot and they're just as good. Yeah, 100%. And like, you know, if you haven't climbed with a bunch of quick draws, yeah. you know, you're probably not going to notice much of a difference. Yeah. Um, you'll probably notice the difference compared to the gym ones. Yeah. Um, but the gym other, ones are quite stiff. Yeah. Pretty like much any that, quick draw like, you buy is going to be better than the gym. Yeah. No offense. But no safer, just nicer. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. Probably wouldn't notice the difference climbed on a bunch. Yeah. You kind of find the ones you like. Yeah. And then I guess price range is the other. The other factor. You know, buying 10 is a pretty good number, 14 is a better number. Yeah. How many quick draws do you rack? Normally? What's your normal rack of quick draws? I think 14. 14. Yeah. But uh, I can't tell me they are on the farm. And I'll take then one. You inch take that many, yeah. Because that's how many you have in your bag. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, I think I have 14. Okay. Um, generally chat to your partner to show me the air. Yeah. Depending on what you're climbing, you might be leaving draws on. Yeah. Um, sure, I mean, if you have 14, your partner has 14. Yeah. You can, do a yeah. you can do a lot. You could put drawers on three routes at a hallucinogen. Yeah. And just climb three routes with the drawers fixed. Yeah. When I say 14, I've got 14 quick drawers and one 240 quick draws. One 240. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have, so I have three of this length, two of the slightly shorter one, and then like 10 of the regular length, and then two of these. Two of these, and obviously the three extra long ones that I talked about earlier. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. No. Actually, this is basically exactly what I have to try. Yeah. I like them. They're pretty. Yeah. They are pretty. I mean, at the end of the day, climbing is a pretty selfish thing. You may as well look good while you're doing it. Yeah. Anything else on that day list, eh? No, I think we've covered everything, eh? How to rack draws for sports, how to clip bolts outside, mm -hmm. gate orientation, rope direction, long and pull, short quick draws. Oh, chat about why both Venus face the same way. When you, how long ago did you start climbing? I. Uh, so when I was, what? What is grade 5? Probably like, 30. You're like, I'm 11. Like 12, you're 12, 11. Yeah, so yeah. I can say I started around then. And. Uh, my first quick draws were the, the Posi Riders. Oh, okay. With the older, like I said, the old original light yeah. blue and silver ones. Yeah. Very tasty, got stolen. Mm. Hope they broke. Um, 
Yeah, I, rem I, I clearly remember the draws being opposite. You know, yeah, like this. when I started climbing, everyone had their quick draws dragged this way, mm. you know, mm. I remember facing that. the gates in opposite directions. And then, and then overnight, they were just all the same way. It wasn't overnight. I think Black okay, Diamond. It wasn't overnight. It's... Yeah. Have you ever checked the Black Diamond? I think it's called the QC Lab or something. Mm -hmm. The guys at Black Diamond just do like a whole bunch of tests all the time. Colin Powick is the like, climbing category director and he often does, like Black Diamond often releases these little videos about why things are the way they are. Like they did one on chalk bags and <laughs> why you should hang your chalk bag on a bolt. Or like tip it to your harness in the way it's been designed. Instead of hanging your quick draw, your chalk bag on a quick draw, it's just not efficient. But they yeah. talked about why both gates face the same direction. Okay. So for all of you, old school climbers that are climbing with your gates facing opposite directions on your quick draws. You're wrong. Black Diamond did a study to prove why you're wrong. Google it and change your quick draws around so that both gates are facing the same direction. Can you tell us quickly why they're wrong? Something to do with the way it pulls on the bolt and like the way it slides when you fall on it. Like often, the quick draw is like chilling a little sideways and when it slides down the rock. So let's say, Okay, so let's say you've clipped this one this way. When you fall, you're sliding down the wall. As it's sliding down the wall, this gate can be pulled open, yeah. which isn't that ideal. But when you're sliding this way, you want ideally this spine to slide. Or something like if you're clipping this one this way, it mean, means this one is this way. And there's a way for it to like go around and then just unclip itself. Okay. So even though... And I'm sure just with force, the way it's, the rope sits in the carabiners, on the sling, on the dog bone. On the dog bone. Well, it'll still bolts. pull through the the deepest end of the basket. Yeah. Like, then the... Oh, I can't remember what this is. The rope basket, the... I'll call it the sling basket. So either way, the force is still in one line through, no matter yeah. which way you turn this bean. Like it doesn't make the carabiners weaker to have them face in the same direction okay. or the opposite direction. But if you're clipping this one, this one, you'd want it to sit like this. Yeah. Right. So if you're climbing to the left, the right, sorry, you'd want the the spine facing the right. Yeah. But then your top carabiner as you climb. Uh -huh. Ah. Science, eh? Okay. Yeah, so that that's why. Sense. It's it's a wonder it took him so long to figure that out. Yeah, well, I think it's just a rare scenario when so that happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sure. But it can. So now, solid. Okay. Good to know, eh? Good to know. I just yeah. stayed up with the times and just copied around else did. Yeah, well, that's what most people do. But yeah. hopefully. No, I know. They do. Some people are just set in their ways. Mm. So if you were one of those people set in your ways, now you know. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. For sure. Well, you already have yours right there. Yeah. You? So, but now you know why. No, nah, I know why. Uh, yeah. You go around spewing knowledge, setting knowledge. Yeah. Spraying. We should come up with a podcast. Yeah. What should we call it? Shit talks. Shit talks. It wears an arm. It Or yeah. maybe something a little more witty along the lines of like, yeah. fine. Mm. The bad beta podcast is such a good name. Yeah. We can do the good beta podcast. Mm. Better beta. The better beta. <laughs> the be giving you the beta to be better. City Rock. The City Rock. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it to her first. The better, better. Yeah. Or should. What, the thunder clean. <laughs> the thunder clean. <laughs> the thunder clean. Boy, close. <clears throat> yeah, I'll just look at some of those crazy. Yeah, crazy climbing moves. Mm. That should be a topic for our next podcast. Mm. Yeah. I'll just read through a list of crazy climbing moves. <laughs> with video references. Yeah. Yeah. If you have some of those old school ones, I think the thing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the yeah, the free soloing with all the gear on the harness. Yeah. 
if you're going to free solo, take your gear off your harness. Why even wear a harness in the first place? You're just hampering yourself. Yeah, also when you boulder. Yeah. Yeah, take your harness off when you boulder, please. Makes holes in the mats, and you look like a gun. Cool, I think we're done. Yeah.